Hello, hello everyone. In this first video, we are going to talk about data exploration and how pivotal it is if we want to produce good statistics. Applying the wrong statistical test can have disastrous consequences, as it can mean misinterpreting the experimental results and drawing the wrong conclusions. One way to avoid this is to go through data exploration before doing any statistics. Let's add some context here and be more specific. Before doing any parametric statistical test, we need to explore our data to check that the assumptions of such tests are met. Now, what on earth are parametric tests, you may wonder? Well, there are the classic ones, such as the t-test or the ANOVA. And what are the assumptions? They are about data behavior, and the two main assumptions are normality and homogeneity of variance. If we want to apply any parametric test, such as the t-test, for instance, we are talking about continuous data. Now, tests from the parametric family are happy to deal with data which behave in a particular way, and that's what the assumptions are about. So, the first one is normality, which is, among other things, about the central tendency or how we can best summarize data. And the second one is about homogeneity of variance, the dispersion of the data or how noisy they are, and more importantly, if they are noisy in a similar way within the different groups. Of course, we can apply parametric tests on badly behaved data, and they will give a p-value, but not one that could be trusted. The bottom line is, if we give dodgy data to a statistical test, it will give us back a dodgy p-value. So, the first assumption is normality. Now, we don't want our data to be normal because it looks pretty. We want them to be normal because parametric tests will compare means. So, they will rely on the means to be faithful summaries of data, which is the case in a normal distribution. And it is such an intuitive thing, really. Normal data are symmetrical and tend to cluster around the center of their distribution, hence the expression central tendency. And the center is the mean. Sweet. So it is really important to make sure that our data are behaving normally, as if they depart from normality, the mean is no longer a faithful summary. Now, there are two main departures from normality. The first one is skewness, which is basically a lack of symmetry. Data can be positively skewed with the tail on the right or negatively skewed with the tail on the left. This is easily spotted if we take the time to explore our data. And it is easy to see how much it matters, if, even if one knows nothing about stats. Looking at this mean here, we see how misleading it would be in summarizing data. The second main departure from normality is courtesies, which is basically a measure of the degree of pickedness of the distribution, which doesn't sound like a real world, actually. Anyway, it is a bit more difficult to eyeball when exploring one's data as they look normal, as in symmetrical, but the distribution is actually either too fat or platycurtic or too skinny or leptocurtic. As I said, these departures from normality can be identified by graphically exploring the data, but they can also be quantified with formal statistical tests, which we will see in a minute. The second assumption is not so much about the behavior of data within a group, but rather about similarity between groups. And that assumption is homoselasticity, which is a super difficult word to pronounce, but that is easy to understand. It means homogeneity of variance. Basically, when we use a parametric test, like the t-test for instance, we want to see a difference on average between two groups of values, which means we look at the difference between the two means, but also implicitly we expect consistency of behavior from the data. As in, we expect values from one group to go up or down relative to the other group in a consistent fashion, like in our data here. In other words, we expect the variability to be similar in both groups. It matters to us for our interpretation of what we observe, and it matters for the t-test, which is combining the variability of both groups on the assumption that it is comparable. So there we go, homogeneity of variance, second assumption, tick. Now let's try an example. We are going to look at the body length of coyotes. So, let's say we have collected the data and we want to know if there is a difference between males and females. 
Before thinking about stats, our first job is to explore our data, because our choice of a statistical approach will be driven, among other things, by the question we are asking, by the nature of our data, and by their behavior. So, data exploration is totally pivotal. One cool way to have a first look at our data is a scatter plot. It shows all the data at once, and if we add the mean, we have a good visual reference to check out central tendency or symmetry, hence normality. Now, if we look closer at the female's data, we notice the, that two values seem quite away from the rest. These could be outliers. One way to find out is to plot the data as box and whiskers plots, the Tukey version. John Tukey was the guy who designed the box and whiskers plot, and he made sure we could make the most of it, like, for instance, identifying outliers. And here we can see that these two girls are official outliers, as in they do not belong. More generally, box plots are five points summary of a sample, median, upper quartile, lower quartile, smallest and highest values. Now, we should never be too hasty and throw away outliers. We should always check first that the values are genuine or that there are no technical or even biological issues associated with it. For instance, here, these two females may be puppies. If all is okay, we should consider how far they are from the cutoff point and keep in mind that there are different accepted cutoff points and different ways to identify outliers. Here, we use a graphical approach, but we could also use statistical tests, such as the GROB test, for instance, which may, may tell us that these values are actually okay. Here, it is probably safe to keep them in our analysis if only because we are looking at true biological viability. And finally, PRISM offers a cool feature, violin plots. They can be very powerful tools to explore data behavior, especially when exploring big data sets. To recapitulate, these three graphs show symmetry, indicative of normality, and homogeneity of variance. So these data seem suitable for a parametric approach. However, if we want further reassurance about normality, we can use formal tests. PRISM runs four of them by default, of which D'Agostino Pearson and Shapiro Wilk are perhaps the most widely used. Let's see what they have to say about our coyote data. These are four different methods, so they produce four different p-values. However, the conclusion should be the same, which is that there is no significant departure from normality, meaning our data passed the normality tests. So we are good, which doesn't come as a surprise after our graphical examination of the data, but is still reassuring. Now, there is one last way to check the normality assumptions, the QQ plot. QQ plots are really cool and elegant way to check normality, and here is how they work. On the x-axis are the actual values, our coyotes. So that's the shortest male coyote, for instance, and here is the longest one. Easy. The predicted data are data which have the same mean, the same standard deviation, that's the noise, the viability of the data, the same sample size, but are coming from a perfectly normal population. So they are our fake coyotes. If our data are normally distributed, we would expect the values to fall into a line, like in an almost perfect correlation, which is what we kind of see here, and even the two female outliers do not look too preoccupying. By the way, QQ stands for quantile quantile, and a quantile is about quantity, so it is the quantity or proportion of data that we expect to see at a certain place in the distribution or at a certain distance of the mean. So, as we can see, there are many different ways to check out the first assumption. As for the second one, apart from the graphical approach, there are also statistical tests that can identify significant difference between group variances. They are run by default in PRISM when we run a parametric test, so we will talk about it then. Okay, so one last time, before doing any stats, we need to explore our data. And before doing any parametric statistical test, we need to explore our data to check that the assumptions of such tests are met. As for our coyotes, we did a good job with data exploration, so we can be pretty confident that a parametric approach is okay here, namely a student t-test, which we will do together in another video. 
Thank you for listening. And don't forget, stats don't have to be scary.